Save the Nightlife, which is a really cool article from one of the founders of the new Warehouse Project in Manchester that looks fucking banging. Have you guys seen it? They've they've um, they've reopened Warehouse Project in Manchester. Um, I think it's um. Let me see if I can find it here. I think I got the look. Yeah, this is the location, right? Warehouse Project. Warehouse Project Instagram. Let me see if I can find it. They've got an Instagram profile where they post some of the stuff on there, but it looks fucking banging, right? Warehouse Project Manchester's relaunched. I think it's in another place that looks really cool. <laughs> that i'm a big fan of um let me see if i can get up on you on the screen is the instagram here yep 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 i got it up on here flume's playing very very soon oh my god that's gonna be awesome hopefully he doesn't eat somebody out on stage again but who knows <laughs> um that's it so yeah there's a great great article here from esquire it says how to save the uk's nightlife five easy steps um the warehouse project sasha lord who's also one of the nightlife what is he the nightlife the night czar for manchester but imagine look at our night look at their night in manchester right is this guy is the former founder of um warehouse project and uh, the hacienda or something else he's got a story he's got a really deep history and experience about running clubs and running club nights and you've got the amy lammy woman that we got here who does what comedy nights and i don't know what what does she know of nightlife she's not i've never seen her out i've never seen her about her, anyone that knows her that you know hanging out socially she it's just a complete devoid it's she just she's you couldn't get someone more disconnected from the scene than Amy Lammy. You couldn't get someone more plugged into the Manchester scene than this guy, Sasha Lord. So this following, right? Um, this is an article from Esquire. It says the following here. The big British night out is endangered. Last year, 21% of clubs across the country closed. And after five steady years, the Guardian reported that last year, roughly 200 million has been wiped off the value of UK clubs since 2013. No surprise. Some fear the lights might be coming up on the UK culture as we know it. Lost, London lost 50% of its venues between 2011 and 2016. 50%. You know how insane that is? Those 50% of the venues are the reason why 50, more people are coming to London to hang out and to have a good time. And you're cutting them off because you don't want the noise or whatever. It's just a bizarre way to do things. According to the mayor's office, right? Despite the numbers of um, stabilizing since, Amy Lammy, Sadiq Khan's night czar, she's fucking awful, has come in for criticism for once some quarters, especially when Hackney Council brought in curfews, 11 p.m. in a week and midnight on the weekends for East London's vibrant clubs, bars in July 18th. And even Lamy or Khan have power over licensing laws, though, and the impression that our nightlife is now on the mercy of developers is lingering, of course, right? But it's not just, um, it, of course, the Hackney thing was more, there's more nuance, there's more layers to it. A lot of the residents were annoyed. A lot of the clubs also were very lax and very um, um, careless with how they um, conducted their clubs. They weren't necessarily looking after the, the, the community. They weren't necessarily making sure patrons weren't pissing on the walls or taking the piss of the local area. So the, essentially the council, the local residents just got fed up with the clubs. That's essentially what happened. There are some pressure from the developers too, but they just got fed up. The developers offered them a, another route that, you know, essentially um, required them just to sign over the, you know, the permission or to kind of build some massive skyscraper that's made out of glass and, and aluminium that is or glass and steel that isn't going to cause any trouble as opposed to like a basement bar. I kind of get it. Um, but still, Amy Lammy and Sadiq Khan are absolutely useless in terms of actually enforcing or actually enacting any kind of change in London in that regard. Um, it's not just London either. Notable res recent casualties include the Mint in Leeds, which closed in March, blaming redevelopment. So what do we do? Sasha Lord has a plan. He's one of the key men running Manchester's Clubbing Institute Warehouse Project, right? He's involved in the Warehouse Project. That's like Amy Lamont being involved in Printworks. Would that happen? Probably not. Or Fold? Probably not, right? And Parklight Festival. Since June 2018, he's been the Greater Manchester Night Czar, advising Mayor Andy Burnham on the region's nighttime economy. So imagine all these examples that we went to pick from Berlin, Amsterdam. We've got an, we've got an example right here on our own shores in manchester up the road right that's doing things perfectly and we don't take we don't take their example for it why why don't we take any lessons from what they're doing doesn't make any sense um the plan uh the plan lords come up with um with for burnham the greater manchester nighttime economy blueprint is specifically aimed at the city's 10 boroughs but it might just be a, uh, a philip that britain nightlife needs right cool maybe it's the same idea that i had about having one kind of like full type place in each area of london north north south east west right so then essentially you kind of um uh, decrease the strain on smaller bars and pubs because then people know they have another place to go to if they want to go and get fucked up maybe on the phone lords earnest and today lords lords earnest and today particularly buoyant I've, I've just seen David DeGay sign a new contract for the United States, so that's made my day. Lord, who's from um, Wittenshaw in South uh, Manchester, has been putting on nights in Manchester since 1994. He found the warehouse project with his friend Sam Candle, holding their first party in 2006 at the old um, Boddington's Brewery in Strange Ways, or 
to the North of the City Centre. The high security prison of the same name was next door and Lord and Khan got complaints from the warden that the sound from the public enemy set had turned the prison into a rave. He's a fan of Lammy's work in London. Mm, politically correct, I don't think he is. And he's upbeat about the state of the UK nightlife despite 27% dropped in getting entrance to clubs. For one thing, he says the stats don't tell the full story. The club category includes the bars and the plays and music rather than the specialist nightclubs you might think of. The blueprint picks out five priorities. Safety, transport, diversity, skills and well-being and regeneration. With fewer police on the streets after nearly a decade of austerity, the blueprint says people are feeling less safe on nights out. So look after each other. So safety have havens where clubbers can chill out a bit or sober up or change their charge their phone or find their mates or have a cup of tea and talk have been trialed in Manchester and then will soon hit Wigan and Bolton. So far they've proved a hit, which I which I makes sense. I think if you've ever been to an, on a night out, especially on a strip in a town like Manchester <laughs> and Liverpool, you know, people go hard. So to have an area where someone can actually chill out, charge their phone, find their mates, have a cup of tea before they head out and get because usually you know most clubs and bars just chuck you out right you get fucked you get drunk and just they just throw you out into the streets and that's what causes all the trouble and all the madness you see all these ambulances all around the place but this makes more sense um blah 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 um transport is less is easily fixed outside of london privatized buses trams and trains tend to stop running around midnight it's not just clubbers scrapping for surcharge ubers lord said 53 percent of people working in manchester nighttime economy earn less than living wage the travel takes a big chunk of that they are being hit with penalised officials. Uh, Burnham has also just just suggested another push for a local control on transport. The last two options, regeneration and diversity, are of openings are interweaved. Lord it remembers when shopping. Uh, mega lift that Trafford Centre opened and sucked the life out of High Street across Greater Manchester. Internet shopping ratcheted up the pressure. Take Altrincham for instance. I think our base base bastion of culture was Weatherspoons, and that was practically about it. But a revived co- covered market. Uh, triggered the whole vegetation of the town some really good independent bars and independent restaurants popped up and the purple flag of waters diver- of diversity and safe night out will full of the year a decade of austerity hasn't helped but lord says local decision making is vital i think the mayor's doing is trying to drag as many powers into the city region as possible which is awesome then there's also the tale as old as time the song is on a rhyme you'll find a nightclub restaurant as being printed so yeah great great um Great suggestions from him in general. I think by by comparison to what's going on in London, what they're doing in Manchester seems like a lot more forward thinking, a lot more interesting than what we're doing here. I hope the next night czar that we get after Amy Lammy, because I don't know how long is she going to be in power for as well? Like she's there forever, isn't it? Someone else needs to kind of get voted in. Hopefully somebody that is of the culture, has some connection to the culture and isn't just some like vapid person that no one gives a shit about and doesn't really, you know, just stands on the sidelines and goes to events and shakes people's hands. But again, going forward, I think those are some nice areas to concentrate straight on warehouse project looks fucking interesting i can't wait to go visit it myself i've got some images here from warehouse project flume is playing there very soon with ross from friends or uh, when wednesday the 13th of november we've got image here of who's this um mk and gorgon city playing which looks fucking awesome another cool video here it looks just really good isn't it, doesn't it mk playing imagine that yeah looks fucking so much fun man it looks like so much fun. I can't wait to go there. Is Den- Dennis Salter playing here? Is Dennis Salter? Huh? Or Joseph, was it? Marco Joseph Caparelli? Or Joseph, Marco Corolla and Joseph Caparelli playing back to back. That should be good. I'm looking forward to going, man. Has anyone been to Wales Project so far, Manchester? Let me know in the comments. I'll be interested to see, hear what you guys think of it. Oh, Honey Dijon played. That must have been mad, isn't it? Look at that. Look at how that looks for the back door. That looks amazing. Such Instagram ready. Whatever, like the lights are not a fan of everyone's phones are on, but you know what can you do in that regard? But it looks fucking gorgeous, doesn't it? Funny DJ on playing, the drops are coming. Wow! Awesome! Can't wait, man! Can't wait to go visit myself. But yeah, uh, big up, um, big up, Sasha Lord. What he's doing there with the warehouse project in general is amazing. And I can't wait to come to your club, my friend. It looks fucking cool.